So, uh, welcome to the lecture 38, the organic certification process. So, uh, last class we have discussed about the standards uh, of organic farming. So, based on the standards, some of the rules and regulations, so we can go for the organic certification process and you know this is essential so for uh, uh, building or the, the minimizing the gap between the producers and the consumers to have a better quality assurance we must go for the producer must the, go for the uh, organic certification process. So, after this we will we'll discuss about the uh, some of the operational structures for the organic certifications and finally, we will conclude uh, this course with the marketing of the uh, organic force. So, let us start uh, with this uh, organic certification process. Uh, uh, so, you know what, uh, what is uh, organic certifications? You know, or, uh, organic certification systems is a quality assurance initiative intended to assure quality, prevent fraud and promote uh, commerce based on standards and ethics. So, as we discussed earlier, the standards we have discussed based on the standards. So, going for the certifications, this will facilitate for the, uh, uh, this will make a and trust building among the consumers for the regarding the assurance of the quality of the organic products. And also that can prevent any of the uh, frauds and the also that can uh, en uh, enhance or the encourage marketing of the organic products. So, uh, why certifications you see? So, certifications by the third party assurance from producers to consumers they are separated by distance. So, that so by third party uh, certification is made so that the uh, consumer have a quality assurance on the uh, organic products. Then assurance to the consumers that their concerns for the healthy food has been addressed. So, the, the other one is the effective marketing tools. So, by doing organic certifications and it can have a trust building among the consumers that helps in the marketing of this organic products. Uh, by the uh, image, good image, credibility, visibility and transparency. So, uh, if you see the aims and the scope of organic certifications, the aim is the national program for organic production NPOP. So, that provides an institutional mechanism for implementation of national standards of organic production through national accreditation policy and programs. So, the aims are to provide the means of evaluations of certification programs for organic agricultures and products uh, as per the approved criteria. Once we have the, the standards of organic productions, so that facilitate the evaluations of the certification programs based on the uh, existing standards. Then to accredit the certification programs because some of the institutions, the certifying institution they are also accredited through this uh, certification program. To facilitate certification of organic products in conformity the national standard of our organic products. Then to encourage the development of organic farming and organic food processing. So, as you discussed by having certifications by this the NPOP national program for organic productions. So, that can evaluate the certification programs through the uh, national accreditation policy and programs and facilitated certifications uh, of the organic products and also that helps in so more and more conversions of this organic farming more and more area can be converted to organic farming. The scopes these are the policies for development and certification of organic products under uh, national standards for organic products and processes. Then accreditation of pro programs to be operated by inspections and certification agencies then uh, finally, certification of organic products. And what are the requirements to maintain certification? So, this we have discussed in detail in the uh, during the lectures for the management of the organic products, the nutrient management, the input management, insect pest management and the planting methods and the crop rotations uh, in the organic farming. Also, we have discussed in briefly and the last class organic standards for organic certifications. So, in a brief as you discussed uh, previous classes the requirement to certification 
of the organic certifications develop and other to an organic system plan agreed by yes, uh, certification agency or at any time that the significant may changes occur. So, whatever the organic standards as per the standards. So, uh, so the requirements can meet the standards of the organic farming all uh, an organic productions or the handling system plan that must includes in brief a description of practices and procedures to be performed and maintained. The, that means, what are the practices and the, the procedures that has been undertaken through this production practices that should be properly record keeping, the record has to be maintained. A list of each substances to be used in productions or handling inputs indicating its composition, source, locations where it will be used specially for the food processing industry, the ingredients they are used and those has to be very specified and there should be record keeping. A descriptions of the monitoring uh, practices and procedures, so that is uh, the method as you discuss the description of the practice uh, to be uh, for, uh, record keeping, they should be maintained. Then there is uh, a description of the record keeping system that is very, very essential in the organic farming we have discussed in earlier also. A description of management practices and physical barriers used to prevent the contamination, physical barriers in the production sites if there are parallel productions of organic uh, foods and conventional foods, though there should be a physical barriers buffer zone has to be maintained and that has to be record, um, recorded. And also if uh, transportation, the processing transportation organic foods and the conventional foods should not be transported in together, they should be separately transported. So, these things has to be maintained. Then uh, the requirement to maintain certification content as a abstain from use of prohibited materials or substances for the three years immediately preceding the harvest of the product to be sold as organic. So, as you discussed for a the proper organic produce to have a branded as organic. So, this should be, should be maintained organically for last 36 months. Annual inspections of the sites that will produce and handle organic products. Then the maintenance of record for a minimum of 5 years required. So, that shows that the operation is adhering to their organic plan. So, record keeping should be there for the last 5 years as we are going for the, the organic uh, production. The correct use of organic labels and claims of the organic integrity of the product. So, labeling should be very proper whether the, the product is organic or the conventional or certified organic. So, labeling should be very proper. So, use of organic seeds when commercials uh, commercially available uh, those seeds can be used. So, regarding this uh, organic certification as you discussed labeling, labeling of the products is very very important to be because that helps in marketing of the organic foods. So, what is the labeling requirement? How can label the products? Labeling shall convey clear and accurate information on the organic status of the products. When the full standards requirements are fulfilled, the products shall be sold as produce of organic agriculture or as organic. When the all the necessary standards are fulfilled, the produce can be branded or can be labeled as the produce of organic agriculture. The label for conversion products shall be clearly distinguishable from the label of the conventional or the, uh, uh, from the organic products. That means, the organic products and the conventional products should be labeling should be clearly be uh, distinguishable that means, the they are should be intermingling. So, since uh, the how can you label the organic products? If single ingredient products may be labeled as organic when all standards uh, requirement have been met. That means, single ingredient pr product means suppose you have the the cereal grains, I can say the rice, wheat or the pulse, the pulses or you can see oil seeds. So, those are only the like, like on rice. So, after the harvesting go for the processing, then after the processing means milling operations it can be so it can be sent to the market. So, if the rice is you know produced organically and processing is done as a separately from the conventional products, then that products can be brand can be labeled as fully organic because here we are not using any additional ingredient for the rice. So, those are single these are the single ingredient commodity that is either the rice or the wheat flours or the you can say pulses too. So, if there is no additions of any 
chemical ingredients after the harvesting of the produce. But for the products where the multi ingredient uh, uh, products uh, where uh, not all ingredients are the uh, um, organic in origin specially for the process products like where you have the food processing industry as a process for like the jam, jelly or uh, any other the, the processing product or the ready to eat food what you say. If the, if the ingredients are not all organic then they should be labeled as follows. If the where a minimum of 95 percent of the ingredients are of the certified organic origin product may be labeled as certified organic or similar should carry the logo of the certification program. So, please keep it in uh, mind that if you are the processing or the marketing of a single ingredient products like your cereals or the pulses after harvesting and the uh, milling. So, if they are the produced fully organically they can be labeled as organic, but for the processed products where the ingredients are added after the harvesting during the storage or the processing operations there if the ingredients are the uh, organic that is more, more than 95 percent of the additives are organic origin then they can be labeled as certified organic. Or the second case if less than 95 percent of the ingredients and, the, and more than 75 percent of the ingredients are the organic origins then the products may be labeled as made with organic ingredients not exactly certified organics. So, this should be labeled as made with organic ingredients. So, please keep in mind if your the ingredients are around more, more than 95 percent of the ingredients are of organic origins. So, they can be labeled as certified organic if less than 95 percent, but more than 75 percent of the ingredients are of organic origins that can be labeled as made with organic ingredients. If less than 75 percent are the where the, the less than 75 percent of the ingredients are of the organic origin such products may not be labeled as organic. So, these are the labeling process. So, that attract because that way builds the, the confidence of the consumers on the, the organic product that should be properly labeled based on the, your the, the productions and the processing. So, NPOP national program for organic production is a internationally recognized. So, this has equivalence agreement with the European Union. So, this has also equivalent agreement with Switzerland as a international federation for, of, for organic agriculture movement. Then USDA has accepted NPOP conformity assessment systems. So, uh, means uh, the product certified by, the, by any Indian certification body can be exported without the need for rectifications in above countries like no for USA Indian certification bodies issue certificate based on the national uh, organic uh, program standards as per the USA standards. So, the organic control system so that means the balance uh, of interest this is a consumer request a healthy uh, when you go for the organic the quality control systems that means the balance of interest in the consumer and the producers consumer request a healthy and environmentally sound products. So, which the and based on that the, the quality assurance they are willing to pay premium price. So, that ultimately helps in trust building between the producers and the consumers are uh, the then farmers and processors are uh, that uh, producing according to certain standards. So, they may uh, because there may be the, the cost may be involved. So, uh, they have the access to have the premium price market. So, this is a mutual benefit the balance of interest between the producers and the consumers. The producer gets the price the premium price for the production of organic fo uh, foods. So, either the, the, the cost is involved in the input management and input application and if there is any loss incurred due to the uh, la loss of yield as compared to conventional uh, uh, products. So, this loss can be compensated with the premium price. So, that the producer can, the producer, uh, can get the, the price at the same time the consumer or the populations. So, they get the, the quality of the food. So, they are also interest is also satisfied the mutual benefits of the, the organic quality systems. In organic quality control that is a standard accreditations 
inspections and certifications. So, if you see this one, so this uh, uh, when you go for the quality control system, organic quality controls. So, the standards are specified uh, for the different uh, organic standards as I have discussed so for the productions as well as processing and this the, the agency or the certification agency they are uh, accredited by the national body, national accreditation bodies and the, the agency they go for the inspections and finally, the certification is issued to the producers or the um, operate or the farmers. So, if you see the uh, standards, the, the standards are um, defining the production methods not the uh, product quality. So, as I discussed the organic standards uh, usually uh, as you maintain the, stand, the production methods as per the, the organic norms or the organic standards starting from your the land selections uh, up to harvest in the crop in the field and post harvest uh, processing also. Uh, we maintain the organic processing methods then these are the standards are specified that has to be followed for the organic food productions or, or, or marketing as a organic foods. So, minimum requirement not the because the that should be followed as per the minimum standard standards for the organic production that should be followed. Continuously developed and dynamic standards usually is uh, reviewed by the uh, review committee and any modification changes may take place uh, in between and according to the standards may be the um, national and the organic standard production method, methods that uh, is refined regularly and that can be as a dynamic one, it is not a, as, a, as a constatic. So, can be international and national standards with the NPOP, the national program of organic production that has a standards, organic standards. So, we have uh, delivered lectures uh, as per as per that standards uh, starting from your the, the production practices, input management, the uh, pest, uh, pest management and planting methods. So, these are the uh, based on the, the, on the standard describes national the for the organic productions. And the accreditations uh, this program uh, this uh, guarantee that the certification program is competent to carry out the specific task because uh, there are some agency they are accredited through a national accreditation body that we will be discussing in the next class the operational structure of the uh, certification process. So, because uh, the this authoritative uh, body that defines policies standards and check whether the certification systems is operating according to standards. So, these are the, um, um, the body the national uh, accreditation body. So, they do refine the policy timely and also the standards also may be uh, revised regular on regular basis and they check whether the certification systems is operating uh, as per the standards. So, various uh, uh, accreditation programs are there that is a national program for organic production in India. So, you have the European Union also, then IFOM International Federation of Organic Agriculture Movements, uh, National uh, Organic Programs uh, that is for the uh, USA and Japanese Agricultural Standards um, for the Japan. So, uh, so there are different um, the body, the they are the accreditation programs, different the national accreditation bodies are available uh, are internationally. So, different countries, so they have the uh, certification policy and the and the programs as per that um, this uh, in, uh, organic certification is processed. Uh, so, uh, so that uh, once we have the standards then go for the inspections uh, uh, and the, uh, the inspections by the certifying agency what they do inspection on site visit to verify that the performance of an operations is in accordance with the specific standards. Then we have the evaluations and verification of uh, agricultural productions, processing and trading. So, uh, if, if you are going for the post harvest processing then processing and the trading business also as a pro, the marketing or the transportation. So, th those things are the uh, evaluation verification process goes on. Then inspection requires completely documentation by the producers, uh, processors and the handlers means no. So, uh, starting from the land, land uh, if you are going for the as I discussed the single ingredient products. So, after harvest you go for the milling. So, so evaluations uh, comes to the, the field level management, what, how, what management practices has been followed in the fields 
for the last uh, 3 years and record keeping should be ma made for the last 5 years. And after harvest, the processing, how the processed and the handling is done by for this uh, produce. So, those inspection requires uh, for the certifications, then findings are presented in a report to the certifiers accordingly. Then the certifications, so then uh, monitoring the market for misuse of certification mark or label. So, certification agency, so uh, they do keep a track and the monitoring the markets for misuse of the uh, certification mark or labels, assess the results of the inspections in relation to the requirement of the organic standards. So, they do review the results. So, uh, of the uh, requirement of the organic standards or the producers or the farmers or any group of organizations, they have met uh, the standards of the organic production methods. Then decide about issuing the certificate conditions and the sanctions. Then written confirmation that a process or product is in compliance with certain standards. So, then finally, certificate is granted. So, these are the you know uh, the, uh, the agency certification agency. So, they are they are in uh, direct contact with the producers or in the farmers or the operators who are applying for the certifications. So, they have a regular visit to the field visits, they do monitor the market uh, uh, field visit and they assess the results of the inspections. So, there is inspector they do uh, inspection inspections in relation to the uh, requirement of the organic standards, then it decides about the issuing certificate, finally the certificate is granted. So, the, what I discussed here this is the process of the organic certification. So, this is the base the by having the certification that helps in proper marketing or the or the, the business the encourage the business of the uh, organic market and have a um, benefit to the producers to have a raise income of the organic producers or organic growers growers or the organic operators. So, uh, so by, by doing a proper marketing that means the marketing pro the, the certification process. So, the producers or the farmers can get the premium price as we discussed and it can bring the once uh, the price tag or the, the premium price premium price as because as you discussed organic farming some cases there may be loss in yield because maintaining the crop yield in case of organic farming is challenge especially for the field crops like rice, wheat or the uh, um, uh, wheat, those are the, the nutrient requirement heavy nutrient demanding crops. And if there is any loss in yield it can be uh, compensated by the premium price of the organic produce so that the the farmers will get benefit. Farmers must get the good market benefit for this organic foods. Then the there will be more and more conversions of the lands to to orga, organic farms. So this is how the certification is very very important and the process that helps in the providing a quality assurance to the uh, uh, consumers that builds the trust building among the consumers for the quality of this uh, product of uh, the products and that helps in uh, marketing of this. Uh, uh, organic products. So, uh, in the uh, next class, uh, we will be discussing about the, the proper operational structure of this the organic certification process. With this, I uh, conclude this lecture. Thank you. Thank you very much.